All right, welcome back to another video from the Nemesis Gear Steampunk Out channel. And uh, we're back in the Knox Hollow Wood Shop making a wand today. And uh, I had uh, a couple people ask me a little bit more about my finishing uh, techniques with. Um, so I do several different ones, and in this uh, video, I'm going to do an oil and wax finish. So uh, most of the, the wand itself is pretty standard for most of the videos, but I did take a little extra time towards the end of the video uh, to cover the finish te techniques uh, on this one. So you want to stick around for that if you're interested in the oil and wax. Um, basically right here, again, like most all the ones I make, um, First, I'm just kind of getting it uh, into a round shape, and then I'm going to turn down um, the blade of the wand to about the size I want. Um, I'm just kind of roughing it in because I do go ahead and put a taper on this, and I actually show um, doing that taper more in detail on how I do that um, because it's it's been a while since I've covered either one of those things. So I I thought I would do another another video where I took a little more time explaining that uh, instead of skipping it out. Um, but basically what I'm doing is um, you get I get the blade of the wand turned down to about the right size uh, and then I take it off of the spur and put it into the chuck jaws and that way I can uh, work the the blade into the into the headstock a little bit farther and I have less of the wand um, out in the working area so it's um, there's less leverage if for especially woods like this, um, zebra wood is a really pretty wood, but it's one of those that is kind of, it's really dense and uh, grainy, so it likes to chatter a lot. And um, feeding that uh, into the headstock um, gives it less flex, um, so it's much less likely to, uh, to catch uh, and, you know, possibly break or gouge or ruin the wand or something. So um, I just found that works really well for me. So I've got uh, the blade pretty well worked in at the, the about the size they want uh, and I'm just going to make sure that um, this is where the handle is going to be I'm going to make sure that's good and um, true on center there and then um, this is uh, put a little bit the use the parting tool to kind of um, put my waste block off there and then I'm going to mark out generally uh, where the designs are going to go on the handle and if you haven't seen any of my other videos, you know that my um, handles are all about uh, four inches from the um, pommel uh, up past the guard. Um, and again, I, I use um, sword um, terminology with these because it's, it's easier to divide this up uh, into, generally speaking, um, the pommel, the grip, the guard, and the blade. Um, is it, you know, it, it looks that, you know, in functions pretty, you know, similar to me. So <laughs> I've got some stage combat experience, so it just kind of sticks with me. Um, anyway, so now I'm just kind of roughing in the shape that I want for the grip and uh, going to um, move into the guard here. And I decided to take that pommel down just a little bit and because I know uh, on the diameter, I like to have a little bit of a taper um, on that uh, guard as well. So, and I'm just using my spindle detail gouge and I'm gonna go with kind of a tulip shape. I just, this is to replace a wand um, that sold out of the Etsy shop. And I'm actually making one that's pretty similar to that because I really kind of liked the spiral design uh, on, the, on the one that sold. So uh, it's got a very similar, similar shape and design, but of course, as you can see, any time that you're, you're hand um, turning these and, you know, with just basic rough measurements uh, and going by eye, you can get close, but no wand, no two wands are exactly the same. So uh, anyways, I've got that pretty well roughed in and now we start a whole bunch of sanding and I usually start, de depending on which part of the wand I'm working on, usually right around a, a 220 grit and then I'll move to like the 340 grit. Um, which is what you just saw. And then th at that point, um, that's where I'm going to put in um, my wire burn. And then uh, now I uh, do a little bit of, of supplementary sanding there um, to go with the grain. And now I'm using my indexing wheel that I made along with a little um, attachment I made for my rest. And it's already kind of pre-divided pre into quarter inch sections. 
Um, and then with the indexing wheel, I'm able to get evenly spaced um, horizontal lines on there. And that allows me to, you know, basically grid in a cylinder shape uh, on this handle. And that's great for any kind of design work that you want to do. If you've got that gridded out, um, for this one, the spiral is just really easy. All I'm doing is connecting the diagonal lines. Um, and that works great on the taper um, because the, the spiral is going to change a little bit of shape on that taper. Um, but I do draw out, anytime I'm doing that, I draw that out uh, first before I wood burn it. And this is my uh, pyrography tool for doing the wood burning. And it's got, it's got two different heads. Um, so you can have two different um, tools going at the same time. You just switch it back and forth. But there's these tips. There's, uh, it comes with all kinds of different tips that you can put in there and change out your tips. So if you're using two different tips, you can just set each tool up with a different tip and then switch back and forth. Um, for doing the spirals, uh, I just use the one pretty much. Um, and I'm just going to uh, – uh, this wire tool uh, – is about the right width for the lines um, that I like to put in for the spirals. And yeah, basically at this point, I'm just tracing out um, with the wood burner all of the, all of the lines that I did uh, in pencil. And um, I, I do recommend it to do that. Uh, you know, have a, you know, even if you're, you know, going to do some freestyle stuff or whatever, I still think, you know, having the grid is kind of nice because when you're working on a round area like that, sometimes you, uh, you can get carried away and it, it doesn't meet up on the other side when you're coming all the way around. So, but anyways, for this, once that's wood burned, I just uh, take the wire brush and clean out the burnt areas. And now I'm going to um, finish off this pommel here and get it, uh, the waste wood uh, parted off. And uh, then after that, we're going to go into a whole bunch more sanding. And we're going to basically, we're sanding off, um, you know, any of the pencil lines um, that are left over from, you know, the, the grid uh, from doing the wood burning. And um, I start with this. Once that's done, then I hit it lightly with the 320 or the 340 grit um, because we've already sanded to 340. So I'm just taking off that pencil lines. And then I, especially with these hardwoods, like zebra wood is a nice dense wood. Um, the harder the wood is, the, the finer grit that you can get. And you can already see there's, it's starting to get a polish. And, and I go up through, I think on this one, I think to a 2000 grit. So, um, with those polishing pads. And this is just some denatured alcohol. I'm taking, the, you know, wiping the sawdust off and kind of get an idea of uh, what it looks like and everything looks good. Uh, so this is my uh, combination belt and disc sander. If you can see right where my thumb is on my right hand, there's a little block of wood that's clamped there, and it's um, at a slight angle. And what it's doing is it's keeping the, the, the wand at an angle so that really closer to the tip is touching. And I'm kind of feeding it through like you would do uh, a pencil sharpener. Um, I actually think I'm going to make a jig for doing this later, but once I get the taper started on that uh, and get it about where I want, then I'll go to the belt side here. And as you can see, I start kind of towards the middle and I'm not putting any pressure on the wood unless it's um, rolling underneath. So that's kind of the, the trick to that. And then I work it out towards the tip and then I finally round that tip off. And then once I've got the taper on there, um, the the belt sander is a pretty rough grit, so I'm going to my fine grits here on the, the you know, the uh, flap wheel uh, the, on my drill press. And, you know, I go up with a, a 220 and a 340 grit uh, on that and get that worked in. And then it's just back to the polishing pads. So, and this is why I wear my jeans out. I end up having uh, holes in the thigh there, and it's usually because I'm doing some sort of work on my on my leg like that as support. Um, so yeah, I'm just going up, you know, again, up to the 2000 grip. But this is where I, I had some questions. And for an oil and wax finish, uh, I'm using a boiled linseed oil. And the this I this works really good. Uh, it, does, it takes a little bit of time to dry for the oil to cure out. Um, and there's a couple of different methods on this. And there, there's, peop there's people who are like, oh, you should only wipe it on. And there's people like, oh, you should flood it on. And I think some of that is going to depend on the wood that you're using and, you know, how deep it's penetrating. This is a pretty dense wood. Um, so I, this is, you know, if you're going to wipe it on, you can just, you know, wipe it like this. 
uh, and then I find you want to get some friction going there and that warms that oil up, especially in the colder months and you want the, the oil tends to penetrate better when it's, when it's, um, warm. But honestly, especially when I've got these detailed handles to get into all those little crevices and stuff, I'm, I dip it. I just, I pop it in there and I, I get it nice and saturated and then I'll turn it, um, point down and hang it. You can see it's kind of draining off there. And uh, then I'll just flip it over and let that drain down the whole wand. And um, I'm kind of spinning it in my fingers. And on the other end, I'm kind of using my three fingers like a squeegee and kind of corkscrewing down the wand. And you'll kind of see this towards the end here. Um, but I'm just making sure that I've got a good um, solid coat of oil uh, over the whole thing. It's nice and saturated. And then I just, you know, wipe it off completely. Uh, you, you don't want to leave excess uh, the linseed oil on there because it'll kind of get gummy on the outside. So you do want to wipe it clean. So that, you know, takes a while. I've edited it out, um, you know, because just, you know, again, it's just wiping, wiping everything down. Uh, and then you have to let it dry. Um, usually 24 hours is pretty good. Um, you, if you let it, you know, especially if you're doing a, a dip like I did, uh, it can take longer. Um, but once, once that, it, that linseed oil is dry, then you can go to your wax. And I used to use um, a, a, my own wax blend that was um, carnauba wax and beeswax and linseed oil. And that worked really well. It's just that um, you had to make it in really tiny batches because the linseed oil does dry out. So I started using this um, finishing wax. Um, this is just a commercial product. I guess it's a Minwax brand and it works pretty good too. And it, this is gonna have the carnauba wax and stuff in it as well. It's just to keep it from drying out, uh, it's got solvents in it. And um, so you need to wear gloves when you're doing that. And you just put, basically you put a coat of wax on there and let it dry for 10 or 15 minutes. And once, once the, all the solvents are evaporated out and that wax is on the outside, it'll look kind of, you know, uh, like a dingy matte finish. And then that's what you take to the buffing wheel. And you can do it by hand if, you know, if you've got your, you know, just hand buff it, you can. Um, I do this, I, I use these buffing wheels when I'm doing my leather work as well. And so I've just got several of them. And this makes pretty quick work of it. And you can see the shine just really popping out on that. So... Um, but that's really basically the oil and wax finish. It ke it's simple. It, it doesn't add a really thick layer of like clear coat or anything to it so that you don't have that plasticky look. And as you can see from the final pictures here, um, the, this uh, wand had a really nice grain to it. There was sort of a knot there um, kind of right in front of that tulip shape right at the base of the blade. And I, I think it gave it some really interesting grain. Um, zebra wood, like I say, is a really pretty wood to work with. Um, but uh, it's not the easiest to work, but it is, it is pretty and it does polish really nicely. So, uh, but that's basically how I do my oil and wax finish and, you know, a little bit more detail on how I do my taper as well. And I did get this finished and added to the Etsy listing for the Zebra Wood Wand. So if you're interested in this, make sure you stop by the Etsy shop, nemesisgear.etsy.com. And I will be doing more wands in the future. Everybody seems to really like the wand videos as opposed to leather working videos, but I still do a fair amount of leather work. So I'll be putting those in as well. But I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. It really does help. And uh, make sure that you subscribe so you can catch me uh, on the next one as soon as that pops up. And as always, thanks for watching.